active, active, failover, failover. Is there an echo in here? On the ASA, if we are running virtual firewalls and we're in multiple mode, we can use failover, high availability, to do something called active, active, failover. In this micro nugget, we're going to take a look at some of the benefits of doing active, active, failover and in measurable terms, how to identify which of our physical firewalls is currently active for a given failover group. Let's jump in. In this nugget, we get to take a moment and take a look at the benefits of active, active failover on a Cisco ASA firewall, including how we use failover groups to accomplish this and also verify the failover status at the command line interface. Let's start at the beginning. If we want failover in our network, it's going to require two. Two of what? Two of everything that we want to have redundant. In the case of firewalls, we're going to have two physical firewalls. And traditionally, we'd call one the active and the other would be standby. And standby is such a great job. Oh, they got people in line all day long to be standby. Here's why. This active firewall actually moves the traffic for the users and the standby just periodically checks on the active to make sure he's okay. If the active goes belly up or there's a problem, the standby can convert and goes, okay, I will become active now and I'll start forwarding traffic. And that's how it works, active standby. Now, what's the challenge with that? Well, for some people, they might think, well, gosh, golly, I've got two firewalls. They're both perfectly capable of forwarding traffic. It's a shame to have one do all the work and the other act as a standby. So if and only if on the Cisco ASA we are using virtual firewalls in multiple mode with multiple contexts, what we can do is we can use a active active configuration. Here's how it works. We first of all carve up our ASA into multiple virtual firewalls. For example, we have a virtual firewall context one and a virtual firewall context two. Now to support that, we can use two physical firewalls as well. But this time we're going to use something called a failover group. And we're going to have two failover groups. We're going to have failover group one and failover group two. And we're going to tell one device that it's the primary unit and that it gets to be active for failover group one. We'll tell ASA two that it's a secondary unit in this failover pair and that it gets to be in charge and active for failover group two. Well, Keith, how does that help us? You've got a primary and a secondary firewall. One's in charge of failover group one, the other's in charge of failover group two. How does that equate to load sharing and being active active? Well, we then tell this context, context one, that it's a member of failover group one. We tell context two that it's a member of failover group two. And so somebody taught me once if A equals B and B equals C, then what? A equals C, you got it. So in short, what it basically means is that we can train this ASA here, the primary, to be active for this context, and we can train the secondary to be active for that context. And they can then back each other up. And that's why they call it active, active. Active, active, it's a beautiful thing. So the question is, how do we actually verify who's active for what, and how can we change it if we want to? Well, to take a look at that, let's go to the command line of this first physical firewall, ASA1. So how exactly do we know if this ASA, the primary, is active for failover group one or failover group two or both, we can just ask it. We're sitting at the console of the ASA1, the primary unit, and to ask an ASA about whether or not it's the active for a given group, we can just say show failover. Now there's also another option we can do besides pressing enter, we can use the command state, and that's going to give us some really cool abbreviated information. Let's point out what that is. This is saying, from ASA1's point of view, that I am the primary unit, this host, and for group one, failover group one, I'm active, and for failover group two, I'm willing to be standby. In fact, I'm ready to be the standby unit. The other host, this is from ASA1's perspective, the other host is the secondary, he is currently active for group two, and he's backing me up on group one. So we have an active firewall from a physical perspective for both of our failover groups, and a backup, a standby for both of our failover groups. So it's a match made in heaven right here. Another thing that we might find useful is for doing an upgrade or for some reason we want one of the ASAs to become active for both groups, we can force the control over. Since we're at ASA1, let's do that here. We can just say, you know what? I'd like to go failover active for everything. And then we'll do a show state. And we'll see that he is now active for both groups one and two. If we want to give one back, you can do it one of two ways. We could go to this ASA2 and say failover active group one or failover active group two. Or from ASA1, we could say, I don't 
want to be active for a failover group one or failover group two. Since we're at ASA one, let's go ahead and tell them that we don't want to be active for failover group two. To do that, we simply say no failover active for group two and then poof, it's done. So show failover state after that command says great. I went and pushed. I don't want to be active for failover group two, so I'm not. And that made the other device become active. And we can see the same story from the second unit. From the second unit, if we go over to the second unit and we do show failover state, he's going to tell the same story. So in this micro nugget, we've identified, well, at least one benefit of the active active. There are some others, but we also described how we can use the failover group to divvy up the load. The person in charge of group one is active for that group. The person in charge of group two is active for that group. And then we assign the context to those failover groups for load sharing. It won't be perfect load sharing because all the traffic from this network going out will be done by the active firewall for this context. And all the traffic from this network going out will be managed by the active firewall for that context. We also took a look at the command line of how to verify failover status. And that's with the show failover command. There are some options at the end of that, including state, which gives you a snapshot version of exactly who's active and for which groups. I hope this has been informative for you, and I'd like to thank you for viewing.